Hi, I'm Katie Pushbaum. This video is called, like you've just witnessed, my favorite female theater makers. Why have I chosen to do this video? Because, in the words of Flight of the Concords, there's too many dicks on the dance floor. Too many dicks. A lot of the theater programming in Ireland isn't exactly as gender diverse as it could be. And there is a great sense of lack of female presence on the stage, which can be very frustrating and boring. Not just for spectators, but for present and future theatre makers. We go to the theatre not just for entertainment but for inspiration to get those artistic and theatrical juices flowing which can be difficult or impossible to ignite within us when female theatre makers seem to be given this unicorn status. I know they exist where are they? I can't find them. And then you automatically think oh they mustn't exist then. None out there. None whatsoever. So to get those juices flowing, I'm going to tell you my favourite female theatre makers like Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music singing frantically to some Austrian kids to get them hyped up to climb up that mountain get away from the fucking Nazis Not exactly, I'm not going to be singing but still, just some of my favourite female theatre makers from all over the place that help me when I feel down but remind me that they exist did exist, do exist here we go. Number one, Lady Augusta Gregory. Born in 1852, she died in 1932. She was an Irish dramatist, folklorist, and theatre manager. She was most well known for co-founding the Abbey Theatre and the Irish Literary Theatre with W.B. Yeats and Edward Martin. People say her work was hugely influenced by her nanny, Mary Sheridan, who was a native Irish speaker and told her all about the myths and legends and the history of the surrounding area and within Ireland in general. Before that she'd never heard of any of these myths and legends before her nanny because her family were actually Anglo-Irish so they weren't too keen on the Irish part or about the Anglo-Irish. Oh. Lady Gregory was a hugely important entity in establishing the Abbey Theatre which is now the National Theatre of Ireland because she secured funding for the theatre that kept it open. She interviewed dramatists, future dramatists for the theatre and also entertained a lot of companies after their own opening night in her hotel room because she didn't actually live in Dublin, she lived in Cool Park on her estate and just travelled to Dublin. She wrote more than 19 plays and a lot of her plays she wrote in Cool Park in her estate because she was just fancy like that. Her work has been really forgotten and it's never really celebrated that much. She not just revived the legends of Ireland, she was a dramatist, she kept a theatre alive. It's still alive today. Thank you from Ireland. That's right, I am the official newly appointed spokesperson of Ireland. I've just decided Lady Gregory would have wanted it that way. She told me her dream. You should be the spokesperson of Ireland, Katie. Sure, Lady Greg, sure. Number two, Sarah Kane. She was an English playwright. She was born in 1971 and unfortunately died in 1999 from suicide. Lover or hater, her work blew up theatre and was never ever to be the same again. She wrote extraordinary plays that challenged probably everything in theatre. How to construct a set, how to construct language. She did it all. She was like dramaturgy. Kane of Jersey. That's what she did. She wrote plays like Blasted, Teacher's Love, Cleansed, Crave, and 4.48 Psychosis, probably one of the most famous plays. All of her plays are still being not just staged, but they're constantly being studied because of her style of writing. She like picked a tragedy and like fucked it up on its head and like punched it in the face and brought it back down. This beautiful brand new staging. And her theatrical form that broke away from any kind of theatre convention as we know it. Like in one of her plays, there's like flowers growing. How do you say that to a director? I don't know, flowers need to grow on stage. Why? Kana Jurgi, do it! And because she said goodbye to any form of theatre convention, she was, as Alex Sears pointed out, one of the forerunners in the In Your Face theatre movement. In Your Face theatre movement basically said fuck you to every type of theatre convention and then created their own and it was usually quite graphic in the 80s, both physically and psychologically smashed everything and made a new path for theatre to venture down. I love it! Number three. Another Sarah, Sarah Daniels. You know, she's a British dramatist. Some of her plays are Good Girls, Head Rot, Holiday, The Madness of Esme and Shaz, 
and neap tied. Sarah Daniels' work is amazing because she explores women versus societal issues or political issues. Just women versus ah, the negative. That's extremely condensed what I said. It's not doing her work any justice. But she explores so many facets of women and how they interact with the world and the world's issues. Like she has one play, the relationship between women and pornography and how that negatively affects women's lives. Then she has another play about women and mental issues, women and the custody over children. It's so nice to have a female playwright to specifically delve into that world of all things women that aren't usually talked about so honestly. Her work is quite graphic and gritty, but it's actually quite funny as well, which can be sometimes a little bit confusing or if you're like me hilarious or extreme relief to deal with really heavy issues with such humor it just makes it less weighty and makes your mind more clear number four Maria Irene Farnes she's not French though she's actually Cuban so I've totally said that wrong Maria Irene Farnes do realize my pronunciation is totally wrong there apologies born in 1930 she's a Cuban American avant-garde playwright and director who was the leading figure in the off-off Broadway movement in the 1960s like the coolest sentence I've ever read in my life. She wrote plays like Mud and The Conduct of Life. She's written a lot more work. I'm just throwing out a few there. She's won a ridiculous amount of awards because her work has been so revolutionary and groundbreaking. She's won an Obie Award, or I think she's won a few Obie Awards. She was awarded an honorary doctor degree of letters and she was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize for drama in 1990. So she's a big deal, to put it lightly. Once again, another female theater maker who is hugely underrated. Her work is to not just break down the fourth wall, but to invite you in and have a look at not just the characters, but yourself. Mindful. Number five, Lorraine Vivian Hansberry. She was born in 1930, died in 1965. She was an American playwright and writer. She was the first black woman to write a play that was performed on Broadway. That is fucking massive. Some of her works include A Raisin in the Sun and The Arrival of Mr. Toe Dog, which is a parody on Waiting for God of All of My Party. After she moved to New York, she worked on the Pan-Africanist newspaper called Freedom. Her work dealt with the African struggle for liberation and and their impact on the world. And she also inspired Nina Simone's song to be young, gifted and black. Fucking cool is that? Number six. Teresa Devey. She was born in 1894, died in 1963. She was a deaf Irish dramatist, short story writer, and a writer for radio. Her stage plays include Katie Roach and Strange Birth Within a Marble City. She was a member of Come in the Mon. For those of you who don't know, Come in the Mon was an Irish Republican group for women that helped Ireland reach independence. Ooh. She was extremely critical of Catholic society and how oppressive it was on people. And all also, theatre, particularly literary censorship, questioning the roles and the power of censor and how to remove it. Oh Lord. Number seven, Suzanne Laurie Parks. Born in 1963, she's an American playwright, a screenwriter and a novelist. Top Dog slash Underdog won the Pulitzer Prize in 2002. And even more important, she was the first African-American woman to ever receive this honor. Fucking hell, Pulitzer Prize, you really seriously took your time. 2002 for that to happen? extremely fun and inspirational fact when she was in school all of her teachers told her to stay away from literature because her spelling was quite bad but after she read Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse was driven to literature instead of chemistry that she was previously studying she was inspired by a fellow female inspirer inspiring inspirers like inspiration but like inception uh, uh, uh. and she got a grant called the MacArthur Foundation genius grant imagine winning a grant called the genius grant no one could say anything to you ever what was that I can't hear you over my genius grant obviously the grant itself is amazing but that is a fucking cool ass name number eight Maraidne Grada 
She was born in 1896, started in 1971. She was an Irish poet, playwright and broadcaster. In 1964, an Igrada's play On Trail was staged. On Trail, a play that exposed the culture of sexual repression on young Irish women. And she wrote it in Irish for a very specific reason. She loved the Irish language, but she was able to ignore any type of theatrical censorship because it was in Irish. Ha! Oh, trickery! She was also jailed in 1921 for selling Republican flags because it would have been illegal at the time to do that. She was a boss ass woman both on and off stage. Hero! I love it! Nine. Lucy Kirkwood. She is a British playwright. She is a writer in residence at Cambridge Theatre Company. She was part of an improv comedy group called the Improverts. Lovely wordplay. She has a degree in English literature from the University of Edinburgh. She's written Tinderbox and Chimerica. Don't say it like that, it's Chimerica. She also took two of her productions to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, but under the title The Umbilical Project, which was divided into two plays. Cush was directed by herself, Lucy Kirkwood, and then Uncush was directed by Matt Adikosh. And no communication was made during either production. Oh, what? Basically, here's the tagline that they had for it. Two casts, two crews, two directors, two venues. No communication. Prepare to Kirkwood. Go for it. Number 10 is Carol Churchill. I saved the best one for last. Carol Churchill is probably my favourite playwright in the whole entire world. She is a British playwright born in 1938. Her work is, ex is extremely dramaturgically complex. So complex, I could barely say that sentence. Her early work was hugely inspired by British Albrecht's Epic Theatre and Antonio Artaud's Theatre of Cruelty. Probably why I became a dramaturg was because of Carol Churchill, because her work is just endless. There's always something to find out, always something new. Some of her most amazing plays, these are just to name a few. There's Cloud Nine, Fen, Owners, Top Girls, Serious Money, and Seven Jewish Children. She was a hugely important playwright during the 70s. She was involved with Joint Stock Theatre Company a monstrous regime. In 2009 she wrote a play called Seven Jewish Children. It was a play about Gaza and she has it online for anyone to download. You don't have to acquire any rights for it. You can download it, perform it as you wish. The only thing she asks is that anyone who performs it has to do a collection for the people of Gaza. And that's why I love her work. Her work is this surrealist adventure into issues that are happening presently but then also give you a few not answers she doesn't give any answers but gives you avenues of thought she leaves it open for you to explore her work she's so cool and that was just a few of my favorite female theater makers hopefully learning about these female theater makers if you didn't already know them has not just interests you or entertained you but has intrigued you to know that well women aren't unicorns they actually exist and we need to witness their work more on stage previous work and work of female theater makers today why then is the breaks who would say such a ridiculous statement like them is the breaks to explain the the lack of female presence on stage today Oh yeah, Fiek McConnell, artistic director of the Abbey Theatre. Who am I to criticise you, Fiek? Trying to, I think, jumpstart your hip hop career. These are the breaks. Them is the breaks. Okay, then that solves all my problems. I hope you enjoyed these images and sounds. And there's a lot more to come. More alternative theatre information, theatre challenges, and a tiny stage with a tiny play. Hmm, wonder what that is. Or maybe I'm just being quite misleading. Hopefully I'm not. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh my God, Carol Churchill's watching this. Just want you to know, best friends, you just don't know it yet. Because what is the building block to a friendship? Stalking.